internet, welcome to Game Theory, where today's episode is being worked on by a brand new editor auditioning for the job. Hopefully he doesn't do anything creepy and start off a multi-month long ARG that ultimately winds up being too obscure to be solved. Oh wait, that's exactly Thanks what's happening right now, isn't it? He's inserting creepy imagery of himself over my VO, isn't he? Darn it, not again. Well, this episode's already on a tight timeline, so I guess we're gonna have to keep it in. If none of this means anything to you, then clearly you've never heard of the Wilbur Soot ARG. Look at my hair's the same. I'm going back to the hair. <laughs> oh, I should put it up more. And now you don't want that chat. You don't want me to put it up more. <laughs> oh, damn. All right. I wish I still wore suits and shirts. I'm just lazy now. I just wear jumpers. <laughs> Wilbur Air G. Yeah, when he's not trying to illegally sell potions out of a hot dog van. It wasn't illegal. Wilbur Soot is concocting unsolvable ARG steeped in so literary tired. references and complex musical codes. And what do you do in your free time? Notice one key adjective I used here, friends. Unsolvable. This thing is filled with red herrings, obtuse puzzles, and clues that are so subtle that even though it started back in 2018... The red herrings... I think I know what Red Herrings is talking about, and they aren't entirely intentional. It's really hard to talk about this chat. I'm going to preface this. This entire thing is going to be super hard for me to talk about. More Gullivania, think of the five. This is going to be really difficult for me to talk about for the simple reason of the fact that it's it. I made it really badly. <laughs> I the the entire thing was was so shit. It was uh, number problem one. I made it. Four, three and a half years ago. And I I had no idea what I was doing. This is my first ever ARG, right? Problem number two. Lag? Oh no, okay. Problem number two is that it's... it. Okay, I, I really love the story. I really love what I was able to do with the story. And I love, I love where I managed to go with it, right? I'm really proud of that. I'm proud of how, how much influence it had, you know, like, Rambu knew about it and stuff. But what I'm not proud of is the actual, like, 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 the, like the logistics, like, the puzzles themselves are flawed. So these red herrings he's talking about, which I assume are going to come up, are, are going to be not intentional, because I don't like red herrings intentionally. But either way, either way, I'm sure he's going to mention all this, I'm sure it's fine, but... I was going to say, oh yeah, the reason it's going to be really hard for me to talk about this, Dragon Lily, thank you for the 10, the reason it's going to be hard for me to talk about this is for the sole reason that I don't want to spoil it. Part of how good the story is and how much I'm happy with what I did with the story, you know, because I, I, I'm really happy with what I did, Casper, thank you for the 5, I'm really happy with, with how the story went and the, and the actual structure of the ARG, right? It's all ruined if I just talk about what, if I just talk about it, you know? If I start giving shit away, if I start, you know. Yeah. Let's carry on. It has never been solved. When I discovered that one of the internet's biggest gaming creators right now created an ARG, I was intrigued. When I found out that it hadn't been solved, I was really intrigued. To the point that I actually reached out to Wilbur himself to check that it could actually be solved. He told me that while it is technically solvable, he would actively discourage me as well as anyone else from attempting to solve it. He reiterated this a bunch during our call, claiming that the ARG was poorly constructed with puzzles that were accidentally made too hard. And not hard in the good way of, wow, that was really challenging to figure out, but rather hard in the frustrating, oh, how could I have ever known to do that sort of way? <laughs> and I get it. As someone who's done his own ARGs a few times, finding the right level of difficulty is really tough. People take clues and directions that you could have never suspected. And I gotta say, it is awesome That's that Willard acknowledges and admits all of his first-timer faults. I respect that a lot. I also choose to completely ignore him. Sorry, Wilbur, you're a good dude, but you know that I couldn't leave this ARG incomplete. And I gotta say, I think I solved it. I think I have okay. some solid answers to the ARG's biggest confidence. I like the confidence. But to understand how, you first have to understand what exactly this thing was and what made it so hard. The editor Wilbur ARG officially kicked off back in December of 2018, but Wilbur had actually been seeding the idea of doing an ARG for nearly a year before that. Despite having a channel of his own with over 42,000 subscribers at the time, the ARG wasn't actually started there. Instead, the whole thing kicked off. I don't even know how many subs I have. Jack Sucks at Life uploaded the ominously titled I Let a Random Guy Edit This Video. Six this ago, this video has more views now than the random guy edit the video. That's 
That's really weird. Email. This is br Email. this has reached out to more people than actually knew about it originally. I'm not looking for a new editor. Nowadays, Jack collects YouTube play buttons, but back then he was predominantly. A I don't know. Some of you may not know that I did this. I did this. <laughs> Sorry if I if this is your first time. If you're in chat, wait. Can we get a poll going, mods? How many people in chat actually knew know what this is? Who know know what this actually is? Because <laughs> I don't actually know. I have no clue. <laughs> Also, on that note, Jack, I have the one version of the gold play button that you don't have. As far as I know, it's the only thing missing from your collection. I'm just saying, let's talk. According to Jack, he was contacted Shit. by a person named Wilbur looking to apply for a job as editor. Which immediately is weird, considering Jack already had an editor. But things get weirder once he opens the email, which begins with a giant image of Wilbur and a rant against Jack's current editor, Kai. Now I know what you're thinking, Mr. Massey Welsh sucks at life. Kai has some properties that are irreplaceable, right? You're wrong. You idiot! <laughs> I have all of them and- Cool, so 30% of people didn't actually know I did this. So essentially an ARG is like a, um, it's like a puzzle, like a, like a mystery. Like, think like murder mystery stuff, right? It doesn't have to be a murder, but like mysteries, right? And it's like, but it's all done in real life. So it's this kind of, the, the stage from which the game is played. So for instance, the stage from which uh, Minecraft is played is on a computer, right? The stage which an ARG is played is the world and the people have to work together and go out into the world and interact with the world in order to get different things. Austin! Nice to see you, man. 18 months, thank you so much. I haven't heard from you in ages, man. Hope you're doing well. Hope you are thriving. Justice Quinn, thank you for the 10. So yeah, that's that's essentially what, uh, that is essentially what um, an ARG is. Better. What? Who? Wilbur, oh, Wilbur the wrong then <laughs> out of nowhere claims to have invented two of the six strings found on a guitar as well as the editing tool of keyframing. You don't like, need to bring that up, Matt! <laughs> yes, I owe the dude a fortune in royalties. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jack yeah. decides to let Wilbur go ahead and edit part of the video. And things start out pretty normally. At least until the middle when we switch to a video of Wilbur completely taking over and introducing himself to Jack's audience. I look identical. Appearing in a <laughs> old house. Which is really weird. In the middle of nowhere, uh, where no one can find you. Saying that there are people But not in that picture down there. I look, I look very flight. sleepy. He begins to play a song, and then there's a loud thud heard from off screen, and he runs away. It is pretty much the perfect first ARG video. Oh! Piece of content, you pique their interest with a couple of mysteries, leave little clues that don't make a whole lot of sense on their own, and build excitement for the next video. Matthew! <laughs> That's, um, dude, that gave me little tingles. <laughs> that was so good. Thank you, man. Bro. Why's everyone, why's everyone pounding? What? Oh, Matt. You're so kind, Matthew. Matthew Pathew. You're so nice to me. The perfect ARG beginning. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll, I'll wear that as a badge. A next video that would happen a mere four days later. The second video, entitled I Let Him Edit Another Video, This Is What He Sent Me Back, is pretty normal until we get to the end. Jack asks Wilbur to play a song while he sways in the corner, but all we see is Wilbur sitting on a keg. I haven't got a song for you. They, Wilbur, so they took my guitar. thank you. After that, things continue on until the very end, where in the top left-hand corner, we're given a URL to an unlisted video called R Lincolnshire Poacher, itself a reference to a subreddit. Pronounced it right. In this video, we hear Wilbur leave a voicemail for someone, reciting the poem The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Hello, your call cannot be Hello. at the moment, so please leave your message after the tone. Once upon a midnight dreary, while well, I, I pondered, pondered weak, weak and weary over many quaint and curious. If you go over to the subreddit, you're curious. greeted with yet another video called Clues. This again has Wilbur leaving a voicemail and reading yet another Edgar Allan Poe story, but this time the short story, The Cask of Amontillado. My you favorite. You to the very end, though, and you hear more code playing. It's a reversed base 64 code leading to yet another YouTube unlisted video entitled A Ramble. If you're watching this, Jack. Massey well starts at life. I think I'm losing my mind anyway, so. At the end of this one, there's yet another Morse code, this time translating to don't let Kai tell you what I did. ARG lessons, ARG lessons for you kids if you wanna make one, right? Don't do that. <laughs> don't do what I did. Don't put a puzzle and then in the puzzle is another thing and then the puzzle is another thing and in the puzzle is another thing. That was problem number one of where I fucked up. Because it means that if you don't get that one, 
<laughs> this just it just ends there. It's a one track thing. You gotta you can obviously hide things, but don't make the most crucial part of your story hidden like five layers of the of the imagine it like a pass the parcel. Thank Will, William Wilson, thank you for the ten. Imagine it like a like a pass the parcel where you're opening where you're unwrapping it, right? Don't don't put don't put the like next thing that leads on like five deep. Obviously you can put little clues really, really deep. But keep the big things sequential and and lead them along properly. I I digress. I digress. This ties in with a phrase repeated by a synthetic voice. Reverse it, and we get this. I did something embarrassing. I did something embarrassing. I did now something we're starting to piece together elements of a story. Wilbur is embarrassed about something he did, something that has perhaps forced him to live on the run. Apparently, Kai also witnessed this event, or else Wilbur accidentally let what he did slip to Kai and is now afraid of what might happen if word gets out. Hence I will him. say, we're getting, to, we're getting to a depth now in the story where, from here on, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying if you're right, Matt. I'm not saying if you're wrong, Matt. I'm staying completely quiet. <laughs> Someone in the chat said, it's okay, I like your hair. All right, good, good to know. Um, I'm staying completely stum, right? Nothing, no reaction, not not telling you if it's right or wrong. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna give you little ARG tips instead because I've been down this route. Ants TV, thank you for the 10 gifted. Wanting Kai removed from the position of editor, a position where he has a voice and could likely spill the beans. Digging deeper though, we can actually pinpoint the window of when the event happened and when Wilbur's feelings towards Kai shifted. The first video of the ARG was in December of 2018. However, if you check Wilbur's Twitter from a few months earlier, we see him tweet at Kai lunch? saying, Let me take a just saw you in Greenwich, was in a rush and just kinda said hi, sorry for confusing you, with a follow-up tweet about how he loves Kai's work. A very different tone from the email that we see that starts this whole thing off. In short, what many people perceive as the beginning of this ARG, that first Jack video, is really a few months into the whole thing. It also means that whatever this quote unquote embarrassing event was, it took place between October 18th and December 16th, between the tweet complimenting Kai and the upload date of the video ramp seen on October Jack's 18th. channel. So certainly not the whole picture, but pieces are certainly starting to fall in place. The next chunk of clues actually came from Discord, where it seemed like Wilbur was using aliases to push things forward. Via these presumed secret accounts, we learned about a hidden cache IRL which contained a drawing of London's O2 Arena and the word oxygen written beneath it. There were also audio files, stenographic decoders, broken links, like this one was really making people work. But through it all, you wound up with two major clues. Thanks, First, this image, which seems to be an email sent by Jack to Wilbur, mixed in with a book title, book cover, L's Lovely 3 by R. Fakir. The second was yet another YouTube video where Jack syncs up and stares at a camera for about a minute or so. It's pretty boring stuff, but you know there has to be more to this, right? Put the audio through a spectrogram, and in the middle of the video, you find some text. Hello? Can you hear me? I'm they got a British way. voice actor! <laughs> Hello? Can you hear me? My name is Wilbur Sir. I'm... I'm a YouTuber. Oh... Hello? <laughs> I live in London. One of my favourite things is, is, the, is, the, is the American idea of the British accent. My name's Russell Brand. I love fish and chips and live on the Thames. <laughs> Reach you, but it's getting harder and harder. Harder and harder. I'm just, and sorry, this guy probably is British. I'm just making fun of his voice. He's, you have a good voice, King. I'm just, <laughs> I just find it funny. It's just such a fucking juxtaposition. And run, but they're always right behind me. You're trying your best, and I appreciate that. But sooner or later, I'll have to come clean and end this thing once and for all. That man, Jack Massey, sucks at life. He's so kind to me and tries his best to tell me I need to know that I'll replace Kai, or I'll have to tell the world what I did. It's just a matter of time. It's emphasizing the parts of the story that we already know, but not revealing anything new. This becomes a trend that we'll see throughout the third video as well. Now, when it comes to big clues at this point, those actually shift over to Twitter. Kai and Wilbur seem to organize a meeting on the same day the third video goes live. What exactly happens here between the two of them is unknown, but afterwards, Kai's find a friend location was ominously located in the middle 
middle of a river just downstream of the London O2 Arena. Suspicious. We're back there. Kai's Twitter account is also seemingly overtaken by Wilbur. His bio reading, inventor of the ENA guitar strings, wilbursood at gmail.com. Two days later, Kai's Twitter returns to normal, tweeting, what a bloody good swim that was, and that the water wasn't as bad as you bloody think, but swim. was bloody cold, though, to say the bloody least. Cold. It seems that Wilbur attempted to get rid of Kai by getting him to swim in the river, by throwing him in the river, something, but Kai survived. Also, notice the detail about the water being cold. A direct callback to Wilbur's repeated phrase that happens throughout this entire ARG. Is Wilbur cold because he too was forced to swim the water at some point? Maybe. The I'm so cold phrase is so important that it becomes the major theme of the next set of puzzles in the series starting at video 4. Wilbur edited this video. Not much to talk about here. This step actually required a good bit of brute force to solve. Brute force answering is when you basically just keep trying over and over again without any real hint as to the answer. Anyway, you eventually wind up at a video of Wilbur saying his classic catchphrase. Over and over again. Seriously, can someone get this guy a blanket? In the description <laughs> of the video, we're given another base 64 code, which translates to a backwards YouTube URL for another video titled, you guessed it, I'm cold. In this video, we see text saying, it's not forever, is it? What will I do? And of course, I'm so cold. These are all comments on the fact that in the overarching story, Wilbur has just gotten the editing job over Kai, but clearly he knew that even though he had won temporarily, it wouldn't last. A poem found in an imager photo around this time also backs this up. I can paint with film and cut without scissors and not be hassled by the looming fate of Kai. Ah, Why are you putting Renaissance music over me, dude? <laughs> Why? Man. Man. This is mean to me. Me, 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 me. Here only that I am permanent. I am aware, nay, resigned to the fact that I am on but a timer. I fear myself as the loss of my position may drop me. Drop me in the wasteful void. It shall bite me like the cold. And I am so cold. Why, why sexy? Why sexy? Why was sexy the tone we went there? It will bite me. And I'm so cool. Why sexy, voice actor? Why, why did we go sexy? Why did we... <laughs> Look, he goes proper like... Fear myself as the loss of my position may drop me. Drop me in the wasteful void. Look. It shall bite me bite like me. the cold. Like and cold. I'm so I'm cold. So cold. <laughs> Between the Edgar Allan Poe references and all this fancy Shakespeare talk, you can tell that this one is a classy ARG. Anyway, all of this, <laughs> is him that this isn't a permanent fix for the problems that he's caused. It's merely a distraction. Kai will return, and if Jack Sacco, removes Wilbur from the equation, then he'll be left alone in the void with nothing to distract him from what he's done. So, what is it? What did he do? And this, you see, is why the ARG is currently unsolved. No one has that core answer. There are more videos after this, more references to being cold, more drama as Wilbur loses the job back to Kai, and plenty more codes to solve, but to me, and anyone who knows this mystery, the question everyone wants closure on is why. Why is Wilbur on the run? Could why is he so five. cold? Why does he want Kai silenced? What is the big secret? At first, I started to pick at the loose threads of clues that no one knew what to do with, or at least that didn't have clear endpoints on the massive Google Doc that the fan community made. There was, of course, the Wilbur Soot music video privately owned Spiral Galaxy, which just kind of appeared at one point in the middle of the ARG. In this video, Wilbur sits on a keg in a field and plays a slightly modified cover of the song Privately Owned Spiral Galaxy. Notably Bye. playing the song almost entirely Say the name on of the, the band. E and A strings, the ones that he claims to have invented. If that wasn't suspicious enough, at 227, the video cuts away suddenly to play the Lincolnshire Poacher tune. So clearly this video has something important to hide in the greater ARG. And after being involved in the Petscop <coughs> ARG for so long, one of my first instincts was synchronization. Remember that video I mentioned earlier? The suspicious one where Jack stares at a camera for a minute or two and nothing really happens? Well, it starts with Jack saying, Okay, I'm syncing up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three. Seems like the perfect opportunity to sync some videos up. So I tried it, and wouldn't you know, they sync. At 2.21 and they're getting closer, Jack is suddenly replaced by a black and white video of Wilbur staring into a bathroom mirror while digital sounds play in the background. At 2.27 exactly, the song gets to the same point the digital tune plays in privately owned Spiral Galaxy. It's cool, but what? It was a new finding that ultimately led to nothing, as far as I could tell. In the r Lincolnshire Poacher subreddit, there's a cryptic hint in the information bar, do not capitalize on 
this poster's mistakes, and in the first video of the ARG, Wilbur claims to be suffering from frostbite and apologizes for not being good at guitar as a result. My fingers uh, are suffering from hypothermia at the moment, so if I'm not very good, my apologies. Maybe he made some mistakes in his Spiral Galaxy music video, and those are telling me what to quote unquote not capitalize. Well, after listening to the original version and comparing it with Wilbur's version, I found three different notes that just seemed out of place. One at 111, one at 233, and one at 244. Are these repetitive timestamps just the product of me looking too deeply into one puzzle, or do they actually mean something? That's not a coincidence. I don't know. I tried a bunch of things. The lyrics, the You fuckers trying to read my face, aren't you? I'm not giving anything away. Um, you will, you will get nothing from me today, ladies and gentlemen. You will get nothing. <laughs> I do like the fact that canonically in a Game Theory video now, the word cry wank is just showing up. That's me. I did that. This is low-key creepy. Yeah, my next ARG will be low-key creepy too. Stay tuned, kids whatever, I'd still seem to be missing a step, a clue, something. And I could just sit here wouldn't and it be, Wouldn't it be funny to release an ARG during October? Like October, November, like Halloween time. I think so. I think that'd be a good idea. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll keep that. I'll keep that to myself. Of more of the random it. rabbit holes that I look down, but the end of the <laughs> is the end? While I... Matt, you promised you wouldn't use this image of me. When we spoke on call, I was like, Matt, do whatever you want, just don't use the blue image of me looking. I certainly had some new findings here and there. None of it was earth shattering. Nothing was truly connecting the dots in the way that I would imagine those dots connecting. Wilbur was ultimately right Wilbur. with his phone call to me. I couldn't solve it all. But here's the thing, just because you don't completely solve every puzzle doesn't mean that you can't win the game. Wilbur may have won some battles here and there, but he hasn't won the war. Just like you can know the image hidden on a puzzle without having all the pieces, I think there's enough clues on the table at this point to Back, actually so solve five. the main mysteries of this thing. I think I know what happened at the O2 Arena. I think I know who the Fakirs are. There's actually two of them. We'll get to that. And I think I know why everyone is so darn cold all the time. So finally, it's time to talk theories. As you can probably imagine, in I'm absence sure game of a definitive theory. conclusion to the that. ARG, Wilbur's communities developed some guesses to fill in the blanks of the story. The first comes from the YouTube channel Red Herring. They propose that R and I <laughs> Fakir are actually two different personalities of Wilbur. And uh, yeah, I kind of skimmed over it, but at one point in the ARG, a new channel challenger enters the fray, I Fakir. On Reddit, Wilbur suddenly makes a random comment on a post just saying, I Fakir would love this. I Fakir? I thought it was just R, you know, the guy that wrote the book from earlier. But we learn later from R Fakir's completed book cover that R is the son of I Fakir, which is also an anagram for Fire Kai. Very clever. Anyway, throughout the entirety of the ARG, Wilbur is seen both with and without glasses, sometimes even switching between wearing and not wearing them in the same video. And when he switches, his demeanor seems to change as well. Well, when they're on, he comes across as obsessive, but calmer and put together. It's nice when things end with a bow on the top. When they're off, he becomes erratic, impulsive, and aggressive. We love our deadlines here. <laughs> We love our deadlines, we love them. The theory goes that whatever traumatic event is at the core of this ARG, it may have caused Wilbur to develop dissociative identity disorder, more commonly known as multiple personalities. This condition is commonly the result of trauma as the brain actively tries to avoid bad memories. And let me just put in a disclaimer here, this is a real condition that is often very negatively and poorly portrayed in media outlets, usually with scary people who are serial killers Asterisk, being the ones that suffer from it. So please do not fall victim to that stigma, it is not true, it is just <laughs> made up and over sensationalized. Anyway, applying this idea to Wilbur's behavior throughout the series, a lot of things seem to fit. Wilbur only ever talks about the embarrassing incident when he isn't wearing glasses. Same thing when he's demanding the firing of Kai, or celebrating getting the job as editor. All no glasses. During a Reddit review video, Wilbur looks for his reading glasses and then states, I've never owned reading glasses. Implying that this persona isn't aware of the other. This is the real Wilbur, the one who wants to escape, who wants to forget. This is I Fakir. Our Fakir then is the alt personality, the other persona, the son or product of I Fakir. It's a persona that's more emotionally distant, more collected. Honestly, Traveling I think this tea. is right. The evidence Traveling tea, they were the 50. <laughs> Thank you so much for the 50 subs. 
traveling to you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you're enjoying the stream. For it is too hard to deny, and it explains a lot of the weird fakir stuff. But clearly, it's not the whole story because we still do not know what is the inciting incident. Well, for that, we need to introduce one Claps, final Jack. video. Claps, come one on. Brought to light by online user Christian. This video on Wilbur's music channel features a voicemail from a girl who asks Wilbur out on a date. We haven't went on a date since like forever, so I just wanted to know if you would like to go. And that's it. We never hear about this girl again. It is a one-time random event that, for followers of Wilbur's work, seemingly goes nowhere. And it's this random phone call, this out-of-nowhere voice message that I believe serves as both the beginning and end of the Wilbur ARG. Using both theories as a base, I think I've got the complete picture. This mystery girl asks Wilbur to meet her at a burger place, which let's assume is in Greenwich near the O2 Arena sometime in December. Remember, this few, has to have happened before December 16th, but after October due to his relationship with Kai changing. It also links to the poem The Raven that kicked this whole thing off. Distinctly, I remember it was upon the bleak December. The voicemail from this girl seems to be quite awkward, but to me it comes across almost as mocking. Geez, mocking is social awkwardness. It's kind of like when you're in school and the popular girl pretends to be interested in you and then it all comes out as just being a prank. I have a sneaking suspicion that this might be what happened here. Wilbur's social awkwardness meant that he wasn't able to read the situation correctly. He clearly likes the girl and so he showed up, which links in our first Edgar Allan Poe poem from the ARG, Eula Lee, a poem about a lonely man finally feeling whole thanks to a woman. Quote, I dwelt alone in a world of moan. Now doubt, now pain, come never again. This then leads us to a second Edgar Allan Poe poem, Annabelle Lee. Quote again, I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea. By the sea, in this case, the Thames River, and referring to both himself and a mysterious girl. However, when he does go, she reveals that it was all a joke, causing this moment to be marked in Wilbur's mind as embarrassing. He was humiliated and in a moment of rage, pushes the girl, which causes her to fall off the edge and into the cold water of the Thames below. Wilbur panics, he dives in to try and get her out, but he's unable to. She's not able to swim and slowly begins to drown with the last thing Wilbur hearing being the words, I'm so cold. This explains the pictures of the O2 arena and the word oxygen written in the geocache notes. She drowned in the Thames near the O2 arena, lacking O2 or oxygen, which also fittingly ties into that Annabelle Lee poem again, where the girl dies cold and wet. Quote, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee, and so all the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride in her sepulcher there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. All of this would also explain why Wilbur keeps saying I'm so cold. This event has been burned into his mind, those last words, the embarrassing moment, he himself being cold from the water. A traumatic moment so strong that it causes a mental break. It's also a moment that would force him into hiding, explaining the knocking on his door in the first video. He's running from the law, or at least it feels like he's running from it. He's actually running from a guilty conscience, kind of like Poe's telltale heart. So any sort of knocking on the door could be the police or, you know, just a threat, and so he panics and leaves every time. However, there is one small snag in this whole plan. Kai. Kai knows about Wilbur. After all, we know that they met in October that year. Chat, can I just say how hard it is to keep a really straight face during this, right? <laughs> you guys are analyzing me, but I promise you, any little thing- The smile was for the fact that he mentioned another Edgar Allan Poe book I liked, alright? Bro, chill out, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm keeping a super straight face. I'm not- I'm not doing anything, alright? Shush. Shush. Okay? Shush. Calm. Here, which is also probably when he met that mystery girl. She does say that they haven't been on a date in forever. So Kai knows this girl. Maybe he was even in the prank that they were pulling. And so he knows that she's now missing. When Wilbur suddenly realizes this, he plots to have him removed from his point of influence as Jack's editor, paranoid that this information will get out. When Jack doesn't immediately fire Kai, Wilbur takes it upon himself to remove him the only way he knows, by throwing Kai into the same part of the Thames. However, Kai is a strong swimmer. Wilbur, knowing that he can't get rid of Kai, is now forced to face his actions. In his last video of the ARG, Wilbur talks about how even though the part of him that people know will be dead, he'll still be here. This is where I die. I'll still be here. But this part of me dies 
him. And the part of him that will now be dead is, of course, our Fakir, who now no longer has a place in this world as Wilbur accepts what he did. And so as he begins to explain the story to us, our Fakir disappears. And to round it all up, I present to you the last Edgar Allan Poe poem, Lenore. A poem about not mourning for the dead, but instead coming to terms with death and celebrating the life that once was. Avant, tonight my heart is light, no dirge will I upraise, but waft the angel on her flight with a pain of old days, from grief and groan to a golden throne beside the king of heaven. All of this would make sense as Wilbur is coming to terms not only with the death of the mystery girl, but also with the death of a part of himself. Plus, it allows us to solve the mystery about why our Fakir's book is called Elle's Lovely Three. All three of the poems I've mentioned, Eula Lee, Annabelle Lee, and Lenore are all well noted for their literary technique of emphasizing the L sound in their title. Three Edgar Allan Poe poems with lovely L sounds. L's Lovely Three, all wrapped in an ARG that kicked off with a heck of a lot of Poe references. So, is it the right answer? I don't know. Wilbur wouldn't tell me because he didn't want to give me anything the wider community didn't also have, which absolutely respect. But I also think deep down, he knows that the best mysteries are the ones that never get solved. I mean, duh, look at FNAF. And let's face it, what's more enticing than the creator himself telling you not to do something that is just too hard to solve? Which, you know what? Don't subscribe to this channel. Don't do it. <laughs> it is impossible to click that red subscribe button below this video. Darn, it's a shame too that you can't click that subscribe button because guess what? Here's the thing. Wilbur is going to be back on this channel. He is already starting to seed out the idea of doing another ARG, this time with more knowledge of how to craft these things for the general well, populace. So don't head. be surprised if you happen to see his name pop up in the title of another video sometime it's in true, the future. Chat. Only subscribe. this time, us theorists are going to be there watching and solving, so we're not doing this oh, three shit. years too late. And Fuck. in the meantime, remember, <laughs> no. it's just a theory. Yo! Hey, girl, I'm in the water. Watching. <laughs> oh, no. I, can't, I don't know if... Oh, with Matt Parrot. I, don't, I think you'll probably get it, right? Jesus. Okay. I need to... I need to talk. As little as I... As much as I don't want to, I need to... I need to talk about it, don't I? Right. So...